We'll do one last piece. It's the longest poem we're doing tonight, and also I'll speak the fastest I'm speaking tonight. It'll sort of be a kind of a race between John Lockwood and me. The poem is called The Hearts. The Hearts. The legendary muscle that wants and grieves, the organ of attachment, the pump of thrills and troubles, clinging in stubborn colonies like pulpy shore life on a jetty, sluiced by the little deaths of sleep and pleasure, the hearts swell in the nurturing spasms of the waves, sucking to cling, and even in death, even in death itself, baked, frozen, they shrink to grip the granite harder. Rid yourself of attachments and aversions, says Buddha. But in Juliet's father's orchard already, Romeo says he'd like to be her bird, and she says, sweet, yes, but I should kill thee with too much cherishing, showing that she knows already, she knows already, as Art Pepper, that first time he takes heroin, already knows that he will go to prison, and he knows he'll suffer, and he says he needs to have it or die. And the one, the one who has the general lose the world for love lets the general say, I wish I had never seen her, but oh, says Ina Barbas, then you would have missed a marvelous piece of work, which left unseen would bring less glory to your travels. Among us creatures in the rock-torn surf, a wave of agitation, a gasp, a scholar quips, a scholar quips, Shakespeare was almost certainly homosexual or heterosexual or bisexual. The sonnets provide no evidence on the matter. He writes Romeo an extravagant speech on tears in the Italian manner. His teardrops cover his chamber window, says the boy. He calls them crystals, inanely, and he sings them to Juliet with his heart, the almost certainly invented heart, which Buddha denounces with its endless changes, forever jumping and moving like an ape. <laughs> The heart and its endless changes, forever moving and jumping like an ape over the poor ape's head. The crystal fountain crashes illusions, the cold salt spume of pain and meaningless distinction, as Buddha says. But here, in the crystal shower, in the crystal shower, mouths are open to sing. It is Lee Andrews and the Hearts in 1957, singing. I sit in my room, looking out at the rain. My teardrops are like crystals, they cover my window pane. The turns of these illusions we make become their glory. To Buddha, to Buddha, every distinct thing is illusion and becoming is destruction, but still we sing in the shower. I do. In the beginning, God drenched the emptiness with images, the potter cross-legged at his wheel in Benares market, making mud cups. Another mud cup, each second tapering up between his fingers, one more cup to sell the tea seller at a penny a dozen, and tea a penny a cup. The customers smash the empties, and waves of traffic grind the shards to mud for new cups in turn, and I keep a cup here next to me, held for a while from out of the cloud of dust that rises from the shattered pieces. The risen dust alive with fire, then settled and soaked and whirling again on a wheel that turns and looks on the world as on another cloud. On everything the heart can grasp or throw away as a passing cloud, with even enlightenment itself another image, another cloud, to break and churn salt foam over the heart like an anemone that sucks at clouds and makes itself with clouds and sings in clouds and covers its window pane with clouds that blur and melt.
even enlightenment itself another cloud another image and blurs and melts until one image clings and holds as in the temple in the time before the temple was destroyed a young priest saw the seraphim of the lord each seraph had six wings with two they covered their faces with two they covered their legs and feet with two they darted and hovered like dragonflies or perched like griffins in the shadows near the ceiling these are the images these are the visions too barbarous for heaven and too preposterous for belief on earth that God sends to taunt his prophet with the truth no one can see that leads to who knows where. A seraph took a live coal from the altar and seared the prophet's lips and so he spoke. As the record ends, a coda in retard, the hearts in a shifting velvety ah and ah prolonged again as Lee Andrews reaches ah high for I have to gain faith, hope and charity God only knows the girl who will love me. Oh, if we only could start over again. Then the hearts chant the chords again a final time. Ah, and the record turns through all the music and on into silence again. John Lockwood. Stan Strickland. Lawrence Hopgood.